Hi, my name is Kelly Heber. I'm a PhD student at MIT studying natural resource management focused on oceans and coastal ecosystems. My research is on coral reef management in Indonesian villages. And my name is Ian Dunning. I'm currently a PhD student at the MIT Operations Research Center. I study the mathematics of planning under uncertainty, and I've previously worked at Google on developing algorithms for their search engine. Our fish hackathon project focuses on aquaculture in South and Southeast Asia. Aquaculture focused development can enhance livelihoods and provide new opportunities for small scale farmers in developing countries. Just look at India, which experienced a six and a half fold growth in aquaculture over the past 20 years. However, there are significant environmental problems caused by aquaculture, including water pollution and impacts on drinking water that result in increases in life threatening diseases. There are also socioeconomic conflicts resulting from aquaculture that are tough to resolve. Commonly owned mangrove forests have been converted to privately owned fish and shrimp farms, while the upfront capital required to set up an aquaculture operation is out of reach to all but wealthy investors, resulting in local villagers being shut out. Our approach to mitigating some of this social conflict between stakeholders focuses on valuing the ecosystem services of the environment where communities live and work. Ecosystem services are anything nature does to increase human well-being. Some ecosystem services are very easy to see, such as shrimp and fish production and provisioning of fresh drinking water. Others are more difficult to pick out. Some examples include coastal protection by buffering against storm surge and flooding during cyclone season, ecotourism, water filtration, CO2 sequestration, waste assimilation, and nutrient absorption and cycling. The latter ecosystem services are not so obvious, mainly because they're not captured by the market. What exactly does that mean? They're hard to count, and when something is hard to count, it's hard to estimate its price tag. While we can easily quantify how much shrimp is produced and how much that shrimp sells for at market, the contribution to community well-being produced by a standing mangrove forest is far harder to quantify and compare. This makes decision-making very difficult both for experts and for local communities affected by such development decisions. And as such, decisions are often biased in favor of clearing of mangrove forests simply because we can better assess the costs and benefits versus something like a selective cutting plan that creates some farms for short-term economic gain and leaves standing mangroves for ecosystem services. For our project, we have mined data from over 60 published studies on the economic value of mangroves and fish and shrimp farms. One such study places the total economic value, when considering all of the factors we listed above, of one hectare of mangrove at 60,000 US dollars per hectare per year. Compare this to an intensive shrimp pond valued at 16,700 US dollars per hectare per year. However, we must keep in mind that selling shrimp is money in the pocket critical to rural farmers, while value generated by mangroves is harder to price with benefits that are harder to see playing out in the long run. Our tool, named Captured, helps communities to make more informed economic decisions about shoreline management after considering a spectrum of aquaculture development scenarios that vary according to size, intensity, choice of farm species, and conservation targets. The name is a play on words between capturing fish, the iconic rhizophorus species of red mangrove that lines Southeast Asian coasts, and how we intend to capture the true economic value of coastal ecosystems with our application in order to empower communities. Captured is primarily intended to be used on a mobile device, an ever-growing technology used throughout Southeast Asia. Its target audience is coastal communities involved in or considering involvement in aquaculture. It has two main functions. First, it can assess the true costs and benefits of development involving local ecosystems. And second, it can collect data from farming communities via SMS or smartphone, analyzing it and presenting it back to local users to better inform day-to-day -day decision making. Information is empowering, and we believe that increased data flow into the community in an easy to read, easy to understand, easy to contribute format will enable more effective management of local resources, better economic decision making, increased human welfare, and increased opportunities for collaboration.
We are very excited to be able to test captured in the field in the coming months in two villages located in the extensive Sungai Palai mangrove forest in Johor, South Malaysia, where we have ongoing research. These villages are making difficult decisions around their mangrove use as it relates to agriculture of finfish, prawns, and crabs. Village stakeholders have expressed interest to us for this type of tool in previous fieldwork expeditions to this area. Our focus is empowering the community to make economically and ecologically viable decisions, so we want their input in adjusting the user interface. We also plan on publishing all of the data used to create this tool in an open data section on the application. As we mentioned early on, we mine data from over 60 published papers which are largely unavailable to communities where they could have the most impact due to things like costs, paywalls, and other constraints. We want Captured to change this. Lastly, we plan to set up SMS compatibility in a more sophisticated data analytics section before we begin the field test.